freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to an extreme. Eric has been living on french fries for most of his life. I can't see why I should eat something else. Each year, he eats over 1,000 orders of fries, 20 times more than the average American, and consumes six gallons of grease. No one else eats more fries than me. I'm the fry guy. And he has no desire to change. Fries don't affect me. I'm fine. But his mother disagrees. His life is on the line. Can experts Dr. Mike Dow and JJ Virgin convince Eric to change his ways? What does it feel like to you? Lunch. Before he destroys his health for good. You already have heart disease going on. I don't want my son to die. <laughs> he is killing himself with every bite of french fries. My son, Eric, is a freaky eater. 29-year-old Eric of Cincinnati, Ohio, is addicted to french fries. I eat basically just french fries. No one else eats more fries than me. I am the fry connoisseur. Eric devours one and a half pounds of french fries each and every day, the equivalent of a staggering 1,600 potatoes a year. That's 20 times more than what the average American consumes. The perfect fries, basically crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. My mouth waters when I see my fries. Ever since Eric was a baby, we have always struggled with getting him to eat. We would bribe him to eat. It never worked. But we did find that he would eat french fries. We took Eric to doctors and psychologists. They would say, he'll grow out of it but he never did. Eric's fear of food took over his childhood. When there was pizza parties when I was a kid, I was never really invited because I didn't eat pizza. I do wish I could eat pizza because then I could be a little more normal. Eric lives with his fiance, Anne, their son, Maximus, and Anne's children, Miles and Sophia. I have tried to get Eric to eat other things like cheese to actually take the smallest bite but Eric has like a panic attack when he's trying to eat other foods. He has to flush it down as fast as possible. He can't even touch or smell other foods. Even having to feed the baby is hard for him. Oh, man. Are you gonna be able to feed it to him? No. Eric has never one time sat down and fed Maximus a jar of food. Meal time usually consists of Ann making the kids very good, healthy food. Do you want steak fries? Golden ones. Golden fries? Yeah. OK. But I just eat french fries. Thanks. Eric's diet scares me. It does put a lot of pressure on our relationship. I want him to be around to raise our kids. I'm afraid that he won't be. I'm very active. I skateboard once a week, if not twice. Because of his athletic lifestyle, Eric hasn't become overweight and doesn't think French fries are damaging his health. Fries don't affect me. I don't feel bad. I feel great. Look at me. I'm fine. But Eric's mom isn't so sure. Even though Eric looks healthy on the outside, things could be going very wrong on the inside. He could die. His life is on the line. Desperate for help, Eric's mom, Edna, has called in Freaky Eater specialists, JJ Virgin and Dr. Mike Dow, to give Eric one week of intense therapy. JJ and I decided to find Eric at one of his favorite restaurants. Hi there, Eric, Dr. Mike Dow. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in disordered eating and addictive behaviors. Hey there. I'm JJ Virgin, certified nutrition specialist and certified health and fitness specialist. Mom Edna asked us to come. Really? Yes. She is. concerned yeah. about your eating habits. Just a plate of french fries, that's it. Yes, that's all I eat. Eric's entire diet is salt, starch, and damaged fats. He is killing himself with every bite of french fries. I see you have a laptop and a camera. What are you doing with this whole stuff? Um, what I do is I usually come in, I get a order of fries, take a picture of it, upload it to my blog, and I blog about all my fries I eat. I'm the fry guy. You have a whole blog devoted to french fries. Just to french fries. Wow. <gasps> so, so you actually have created a whole identity around french You are fries. the french fry guy. Yes. It's going to be a little difficult to take something away from him, which he's built a whole website around. 
Let's hear about your family life. They do they french fries all, too? No, they're all very healthy eaters. So what do they think about dad? You just tell uh, them that you just love french fries? Actually, we kind of lie to them and tell them uh, I'm allergic to other foods, so. When you lie about something, that is one of the symptoms in the way we diagnose somebody as an addict. I don't feel like I'm an addict at all. The reason why I don't eat food is I'm scared of it. If someone said to you right now, Eric, your son, your fiance, and you will all die if you don't stop eating french fries, would you stop? Um, I, I don't know if I could. We know we can help you change if you are 100% on board. There's a few things that JJ and I would like to show you. OK. I feel like I cannot change. Coming up, the experts serve up some shocking news to Eric. Who eats as many fries? You do. Eric eats virtually nothing but french fries. I'm the fry guy. And is fearful of other foods. He can't even feed his infant son. Oh, man. And his fiance is at her wit's end. Eric's diet does put a lot of pressure on our relationship. Dr. Dow and I wanted to show Eric the enormity of his french fry habit, so we took him to a warehouse. Hey there. We had to bring you to a warehouse because we needed that much space to show you the extent of your french fry habit. Eric needs a dose of shock therapy to really come to terms with just how bad it's really gotten. You're young and active, so it seems like you're healthy, uh, right? Yes. Of course, I said seems. French fries, starch, salt, fat. This is the worst type of fat that you can possibly eat. It's trans fat. It's fully loaded, as we would call it. We showed him six months' worth of grease, three gallons that he's consuming. How does it look? Uh, disgusting. It looks like it should be in the dump, man. That's right. That's what's really going in your veins. I want you to put your hand in that. Put a hand in there? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you should be OK putting your hand in there. You're eating it. It was disgusting. So what's that like knowing that that is in your body? Not good. Is this changing your cravings? Not really, to be honest with you. OK, well, we have some more to show you. We wanted to show him the amount of french fries he eats in a year. That's 1,092 orders of french fries. You're looking at 20 times what the average American eats. The experts have brought out 540 pounds of french fries. Once deep fried, they contain around 40,000 grams of fat. What does it feel like to you? Lunch. I was kind of getting hungry. I look at this big box as just one big box of death. You're looking at heart disease, diabetes. Eric didn't really look all that shocked. So we called in two years' worth of fries, and then three years' worth of fries. Every time we bring another one of these up, it's like we're just stacking the odds up against your health. It's a lot. Who eats as many fries? You do. Do you know now that you have a problem? I know I have a problem. Do you know you're a french fry addict? And if you had clear-cut evidence that these french fries were damaging your health. You would do what you needed to do, the change. Of course. So we're going to send you to get some blood tests. OK. Eric needs concrete evidence that he is damaging his health with his french fry habit in order to really make that commitment to change. Later that afternoon, the results from Eric's blood test are back. The experts take Eric to his mother's home to go over them. Dr. Mike Dow. Hi. I've been praying my whole life for help for Eric, and this might be what is needed. Homocysteine is an amino acid that causes damage to the arterial lining. If it's high, that can cause a stroke or heart disease. We like to see a homocysteine of, say, 7 or below. Yours is 56. That's a crazy high number. The doctor who reviewed the labs had never seen a number that high. Now, a couple other things that you have going on. You've got an elevated LP-PLA2. 
LPPLA2 is an inflammatory enzyme that increases your risk for heart disease. This is an interesting one. This is LDL cholesterol. It's the worst kind, and that's what this elevated number is right here. When you put together this combination of factors, you basically have a heart attack waiting to happen. You already have heart disease going on at 29. It was not fun to hear that I'm not as healthy as I think I am. How are you feeling, Mom? I don't want my son to die. It's hard to hear that, you know, someone you love may already be at very high risk for heart attack. But it's not too late. So what is happening to your motivation now? It's going to push me to change. Why? Did you see my mom sitting here? It hurt me. I mean, I can change. I just, I want to be able to eat other things that I don't eat. Eric has the motivation to change, but he lacks faith in his ability to actually do this. We wanted to give you one more test. Food psychologists have been studying why people are picky eaters. They've discovered that there's a subset of the population and they are what we call super tasters. A super taster is somebody who has more taste buds and who is more sensitive to foods. They will therefore avoid new tastes and new foods. Let me give you one of these super taster strips. The super taster test has a chemical that only super tasters can taste. I must made me get, oh uh, yeah, that was not good. What do you taste in the back of your throat? Oh, it's like um, I cough syrup or something down there. It's, it's bad in the back. When I do this test on myself, I literally taste nothing besides paper. Eric is indeed a super taster. It would explain why he never progressed out of just eating french fries. It's harder for him than the average person to try new foods, but not impossible. This doesn't have to be your destiny. You can find things that you will like. Are you ready to do whatever it takes? Um, yeah, I mean, I have to. If you're gonna do this, we're gonna show you the way. Yes. I'm gonna try very hard to do what JJ and Dr. Dow say, but I don't know if I can. Coming up, can the experts find any new foods Eric will swallow? It was like eating a cockroach. Eric has learned that he is indeed a super taster, which makes him more sensitive to many tastes and slower to adapt to new foods. His dependence on french fries is now threatening his life. You already have heart disease at 29. By the second day, Dr. Dow and JJ want to treat Eric's psychological fear of new foods. When I saw what was on the table, I was nervous. The cheese on there scared me the most, actually. What we want to do is to use a concept called lateral shifts. A lateral shift is when you make a change from a less healthy food to a similar one, but healthier. Your job is to taste and get it down. Okay. So if you have to use some water to swallow it, you can. The pretzel was the easiest lateral shift to me. It almost looks like a french fry. It's salted. So there's a win. There's an easy right. win. Oh, let's see. That, that one looked easier. That was easy. <laughs> Okay. Eric doesn't get any protein in his diet. So JJ and I had Eric taste almond butter. Let's go ahead and swirl the pretzel into the okay. almond butter. Yeah, I could eat that. All right. That's you all could right. learn to like it right. is what right. I'm hearing here. That's and not bad at all. I wanted to push him a little bit harder. Eric likes crunch. So I decided to add a little bit of cheese to a pita chip. I thought if I gave him enough crunch with the chip, he'd be able to handle the texture of the cheese. I gagged. Couldn't handle it. You got it down. Even though he gagged, I think this really told Eric that yes, I can do this even if it's not pleasant. This is the big challenge. I saved the red pepper for last. What scares me about it is the texture. Mm -hmm. um, it's soft looking. You well, know? Let's, I mean, let's feel it. Some parts of it are a little squishy, but right. some parts of it, you can hear it. Right, exactly. Okay, it had to be crunchy to snap. Right. right. The flavor that was there, it was not good. 
it would be like any other person eating a cockroach. The texture really didn't bother me as okay. much as the flavor. So now we know that, that crunchier texture works. Now how do we take that and find some taste within that you like? We know the end goal. Right. We will get there if you can be open. You can understand that the worst thing that happens is you don't like it. Right. Not a big deal. The main message we wanted to get through to Eric is that he's got to try a lot of foods. Yesterday, I ate only french fries. Today, I eat french fries and almond butter. It's a step in the right direction. After two days, the experts are leaving Eric to continue moving forward alone. So it's time for us to leave you for a couple of days, but we have some homework. Okay. You're going to feed your son. If he were to sit down and feed Maximus a jar of food, he would get grossed out. His mind won't allow him to do it. Now, I also want you trying five new foods a day. OK. The hardest thing for me to keep up with is going to be trying five new foods. And finally, you're a blogger, all right? We actually want to use that and blog about this, creating this new identity for yourself online. We're going to strike a deal with you. All right. We gave Eric a lot of homework. He's willing to break out of his comfort zone. So are we. You experienced new things this week. And when we come back, we'll try skateboarding. Okay. Deal? Deal. That's a deal. Deal. All right, okay. cool. Eric has to take this seriously. His life is on the line. Coming up. Eric still can't handle cheese. But can the experts get him to take a bite of pizza? I don't like touching pizza. Hi, Eric. Let's go ahead and swirl the pretzel. JJ and Dr. Dow have provided Eric with the tools to overcome his french fry addiction. They've left him for the next four days so he can continue progressing on his own. I knew it was going to be hard without JJ and Dr. Dow here. And once they left, reality hit. I think you'll like these. On his first day alone, Eric tastes some new foods. That's not bad. Good. It is really nice to see Eric enjoy some of the foods that are healthy for him. Do you want to try maybe some of the cheese? Despite having gagged on cheese with Dr. Dow and JJ, Eric decides to try it again. cheese didn't feel right to me, so I had a gag. What was that like? Was that really bad? Uh, once got to the back of my throat, yes. I am so proud of Eric trying the new foods. He's doing better than I thought he would. Anne is also impressed by what Eric is not doing. I haven't made him any french fries. I haven't seen him eat french fries at home. Come here, you're good. Ooh. On his second day, Eric begins to blog about his journey to healthier eating. I do realize why Dr. Dow told me to put stuff on my blog about my new foods, just to let everybody know, hey, he doesn't only eat french fries. Well, you're going to eat a carrot with me. By the fourth day, Eric tries another new food, but this time in front of his children. Yummy. And with another big step forward. Say bite, please. Bite? he feeds his son. I was very proud of Eric that he was able to pick up the spoon and feed Maximus. One more. It's been tough feeding Maximus, but it is important, so I got to do it. Seven days after Eric first started therapy, JJ and Dr. Dow have returned. They take Eric to an indoor skate park for one final surprise challenge. <laughs> we got the whole family here. <laughs> We were so pleased with Eric that we wanted to give him a pizza party with his family. Eric has never eaten pizza before. I was kind of anxious and a little worried I wouldn't be able to eat any of it. I got thin crust, very crunchy pizza. So it's almost like having a cracker pizza. If Eric can just take a bite of this pizza, it's going to open up a whole new world for him. We're going to start out with just totally plain. This doesn't even have sauce. It's just cheese and crust. OK. I don't like touching pizza. It's gross, messy, and just slimy to me. Come on, Come on, Eric. Mike, me Come on up. Eric. I did not want to take a bite of it. All 
All right, Got first it. bite of pizza. Okay, awesome, babe. Seeing Eric take a bite of pizza was like my dreams come true, something I thought I'd never see. Having my family there was very important to me. Pizza was a big hurdle, but it's probably something I will tackle again in the future. All right, guys, it's time to go skate. You did all the things we asked. I guess we could uh, do the same We're for up, you. Right. All right, okay. okay. Sounds good. After all we put Eric through, it was fun letting him turn the tables on us. Step straight up and put that back foot on. It'll continue to be a difficult road for Eric. But I also know that JJ and I have given Eric the tools to overcome this french fry addiction for the rest of his life, I hope. The harder you... <laughs> My goal is gonna be eating one new food a day. I know it's gonna be hard, but I just gotta keep going forward. Bend those knees, bend those knees some more. Eric's been eating almost nothing but french fries since he was two years old. He's made great strides with trying new foods. I'm thrilled and very proud of him. Don't discourage, because I'm going to keep gagging. You guys are going to keep falling, so keep it going. We're practicing right. what we preach cool. all day, right? right? On yep. skateboards. OK. 